Eric David Long. Yes, sir. You know what today is a good day for? Chaps and chainsaws. I like that. <laughs> Chaps and chainsaws. It is absolutely a good day for that. That's what we're going to do today. Yes, I'm looking forward to it, actually. Did I say that earlier? Yeah, we're on my property today in Virginia. It's early February. It's cold. Mm. and nothing wakes me up, gets blood pumping more on a day like today than the scream of a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And we're sure. talking about something that is very important, I think. I'm yes. not, you know, not to be dramatic, but it, it mm -hmm. honestly is, is quite important. And we're on my property where we've got some grouse, and I consider us very fortunate to, to be able to say that we do think have grouse that. on our property here in Virginia. And unfortunately, where we're standing, the habitat is quite poor. Mm -hmm. This is where they're at, but the habitat's poor. It's a monoculture of poplar, all the same age, high stem count. I mean, there's a reason why yeah. they're here. We're yeah. at 2,100 feet elevation. I mean, they've got some things going for them here, but mm -hmm. the habitat is poor and declining, and we're going to fire up the saws and improve it for the grouse, because it's very important to me, and I know you would feel the same, and yeah. you do feel the same, for me and this piece of property that we always have grouse on it. Yeah, and the thing about, you know, we're gonna be doing grouse management, Cody and his dad and, and you know, his brother did a project last year, um, little grouse management. Yeah. We're gonna go and evaluate. It's always best to go evaluate your work. Just sure. don't assume that it, you did a great job because you might have not. Yeah. So we're going to improve where it needs improving and just extend it, make it bigger. <coughs> and um, it's one thing, it's like, we're really just putting a label on it. Yeah. When you do deer management, you're doing grouse management and in, in the whole scheme of things. When you do grouse management, you're doing deer management. Mm -hmm. It's just a different mindset tweaking a little different things. Uh, you're thinking predator versus just your food availability and all that stuff. But yeah. as Cody said, high stem density, it's just it's just very tall pole timber. Yeah. And it just it's easy for um, a woodland hawk, raptor type just to come in and just nail it because it is a biological desert underneath. And we're going to improve that and it's very easy to do so. Oh yeah, and it's fun and it's a great opportunity. And like mm -hmm. Eric said, this is, a, this is a project we started last year and we're just going to continue that evolution. But it, mm -hmm. it's really simple. Anybody can do this. If, if you don't have grouse on your property, the techniques, what we're going to go over applies to yeah. turkey. This is going, the yep. habitat we create here, it's going to improve yes. quality for turkeys. Deer, all ground nesting birds. Yep, so you all your song, non game community overall. Absolutely. So we are going to fire up some saws, show you how we can improve some rough grouse habitat. Because yes. they need it badly. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're at one of the sites that Cody and his family did for grouse management. And like we mentioned in the beginning, you know, go back and evaluate your hard work that you did to see if you need to improve, um, go back and maybe just do a little resetting TLC or enlarge the area because you are seeing the positive results that you're expecting. But we talked about last year, if you go back to one of our beginning videos about timber stand improvement, the things that you do now, you know, as soon as you cut a tree, you're seeing those instant results, or you kill a tree with hacking squirts, you, you automatically see the results. And if you see, we cut a tree here, look at what happened. Instant stump sprouts, the deer utilizing the buds, all those mineral, that's basically a mineral stump. Instant results, okay? Back here, we hacked and scorched this tree, this poplar, we killed it. And look, look at the birds that are utilizing this, the non-game community, okay? Instant results. Cody went in here and did a lot of 
herbicide spraying on stilt grass and bases that came up. So again, you're gonna have that battle. But looking around, we're starting to see the results that we wanted to. We just have to be a little patient, but we're seeing stump sprout. We're seeing vertical cover, horizontal cover for the future for the rough grouse. And along the way, we're getting benefit from the white-tailed deer and the non-game community. This is a nothing but a home run. Doing grouse management or even deer management, it doesn't take a lot. We cut about five, six trees down. Yeah, we had to cut some grapevine that we really didn't want to, but they were going to get the tree hung up. So yeah, but the green bar, the green briar that's going to erupt, that gives it some horizontal, that gives it some vertical cover. We made some brush piles and uh, uh, as a result for rabbits, etc. that's gonna respond to this as well as well as salamanders in the whole nine yards. So we did a lot for wildlife, just trying to even do grouse management. A lot of sunlight hitting this forest floor from just five or six trees. Now we'll diversify our cuts, we'll do some flesh cuts to get some stump sprouting for white-tailed deer. We'll also do some uh, girdling, that way the tree, I know this sounds warped, but the tree flow or death, different sunlight hitting the forest floor, different plants. So diversify our cuts, it doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't. It's just when you get grapevines, it can be a little frustrating. Get some trees hung up, but it's all good. Slow and steady wins the race. As with any cutting that you're doing on your property, have a purpose, do everything for a reason. Just like uh, we talk about going out there and just you know, cutting trees down. Learn your property. And as we're walking, you know, this is Cody's property in Virginia and there is grouse and I could be standing or kneeling, excuse me, next to a drumming log. So we want to improve this area, but we don't want to disturb it too much because there is a lot of horizontal cover there's some vertical cover here so that way a raptor can just not sweep up and and grab the grouse while it's drumming and um but it's like there is room for improvement here so we will do some cutting without really disturbing at the same time so when we fell trees we don't want fell trees you know on the log and all that stuff but you know improving this area when you do grouse management think horizontal think vertical think of uh, trees next to the log that way it gives the, the log some structure for predator type stuff so yeah we, there is room for improvement here since we did kind of find this log we're hoping this is a log uh, that they, they utilize and we're just gonna lightly do some disturbance <laughs> What we did to improve this site, this possible drum and log site, is all we did was just look up. What trees can we cut? What's taking up the canopy to let a little bit of sunlight hit the forest floor? Now we had to cut some trees so that, that way they didn't get all lodged up together, but really technically like four or five trees, very little disturbance for the area, for them not, just, not to utilize the area altogether, but just enough that way the sunlight will hit this forest floor and you will have all this eruption of briars, high stem density for those grouse, horizontal and vertical cover, just like we wanted to. A little bit of time, a little bit of patience. Again, doing cuts that's gonna benefit five to eight years down the road for wildlife. So it doesn't take much. I'll tell you what, not to sound dramatic, but the work 
we did today for the rough grouse was important work. I'm so glad that we tackled, you know, trying to be advocators for the rough grouse. It just, it's something that's uh, very personal to both of us. Oh yeah. Sometimes I get a little too <laughs> emotional with it, but gentlemen um, once said, the best thing that you could do for wildlife is that you planted a tree 20 years ago. Yeah. And when it comes to rough grouse management, yeah, you can plant trees, but the best thing, let's, let's take it, let's make that quote our own. Mm -hmm. The best thing that you could do for the rough grouse that you that you could say and stand very proud is that you cut a tree five eight years ago. Yeah, you know to create the habitat. You want to leave a, a imprint on wildlife and you know wildlife management, mm -hmm. your legacy, whatever you want it to be. Yeah, is to stand up, be an advocator, be the. To be the drunk uncle, just whatever it takes, to, you know, to stand up for a species and give it a voice and just then go out there and do practice what you preach. Yeah. You know, to do some grouse management, cut some trees for the benefit of a species that is the bellwether of, of forest health. Absolutely. It should not, we've, we've said it before, um, you know, this is happening on our watch and I will say that till you're completely annoyed <laughs> yeah. with it. This is happening on our watch, and, and the thing about it is that us deer managers can help slow this, this bleeding. We can help slow the bleeding by yeah. just going out there. You're out there doing timber stand improvement on your property for white-tailed deer, and um, you're already doing it. Oh yeah, you're already doing it. And it's like you said, wildlife needs a voice. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't speak for themselves, but specific to rough grouse, I mean, they, they need a they need a voice almost more than any animal, yeah. especially on our especially where we're at today. They need yeah. the voice more than sure. than anything else. But the you know hopefully you learn something if you're looking to learn about rough grouse management. You learn something from this video. But if you don't have grouse in your area, the main hopefully one of the main takeaways you come from this video is to be inspired to make a difference for wildlife. Yeah. And there's you know there are species of concern throughout. You know, our, a lot of our range in this part of the world, it's it's rough grouse. Mm -hmm. Wild turkey is declining quickly. Yeah. Bob white quail. Apply, this is more of a mindset video than anything else yeah. is to, you know, recognize <coughs> these species need our help. Like Eric said, they need mm -hmm. a voice. And while what we were talking about, the management side of things applied to rough grouse, it's the mindset that you can apply to quail, to turkeys, to whatever species in your area needs yeah. a voice. Yeah, and a lot of people who are watching this video don't have grouse. Yeah. You know, states like Louisiana, Illinois, etc. You right. know, you, you know where you are. But that doesn't mean that you can't be an advocator. If you're a wildlife manager, be a wildlife manager. That's what wildlife management is. It's advocating. It's it's doing. Yeah. You can join the Rough Grouse Society. You can join the American Woodcock Society, Quail Unlimited, and the list goes on. Um, I know these are organizations, and sometimes organizations can be frustrating. But the grouse, the rough grouse, that's all who they have for a voice. Right. And I will support them as long as I possibly can. So. Yeah. You, do the same. Just because you they're not in your area doesn't mean that you can't help. Yeah, so. absolutely. This this is something we're clearly very passionate about, mm -hmm. specific to the rough grouse. But like I said, it, it can apply to any species or wildlife in general. Mm -hmm. And it is for us, and I'm sure it is for you. Wildlife. It's our way of life.